guys so today uh, this tutorial is going to be on how to set up a XAM server or local server and we'll talk about a bit about server management server security and how these things actually work and we'll give you a bit configurational uh, help with the help of with XAMPP and setting up a local server on your side for the sake of testing uh, I'm not sure I'm not quite sure like if you guys are already uh, known about this thing or, or very confident or not but I'll help you with that so XAMPP is basically a hybrid software, uh, sort of you can say a simulator for a complete server. It uses Apache server for hosting and for PHP for language processing. Uh, it uses uh, Python and Perl and MySQL as a database. So yeah, that's what it is. Uh, actually MariaDB, not MySQL. So th this is XAMPP I have already installed in my host machine. Uh, but I'll give you step. Uh, I'll give you step by step help how we can use XAMPP in uh, like from the very beginning how to install it, how to configure it. I have XAMPP already configured in my uh, host machine, but I will tell you how to do it from the very scratch. This virtual machine, which is not having XAMPP installed already, I have copied it already. You can see XAMPP is over here, and I have begun. I have started the installation. It's a very simple step when you start the installation. This is a very first thing you can see. You can ask to be able to set up. Welcome to XAMPP Setup. I'll hit next. I'll, uh, I'll select whatsoever I want to install. I don't want Tomcat, don't want Mercury as well. I don't want Fakes and Mail either. I don't want PHP or Perl either. So I have all pretty much selected whatsoever I want to install. So I'll hit next now. It's asking me where I want to install it. So let me let it be the default one. I can change it here if I want to. Hit next, hit next. X and there we go. It will take maybe a few minutes to for the installation to take place. So let's do that. It's actually quite faster than I expected to be honest. Thank you. So as the definition says, an Apache distribution that includes um, MySQL, PHP, and other uh, sort of functionalities, all hybrid in a single software. Right. So do you want to start the control panel now? Of course I want, I will just finish it up. And it asked me what kind of language I want. I want English or German, pretty sure I'm wanting English. I'll save it. So you can see this is the kind of control panel that I will get in the initial time. Everything here is uh, by default. It is not something that I configured. Now I'm going to configure it. First of all, let's select the service that I want to start. And I'll click on start here. Start the Apache service by default starts uh, on port 80 and 443. If it is not occupied, it will start running on that. If it's occupied, I will tell you how we can change it. If in case it gives you an error, I'll tell you how we can change it as well. It's still status connected, it is running. I'll start the MySQL as well, it is running as well now. Whatsoever, like if I want to start the files, I'll start it. What, what else service I want? These services are not installed, so they are not showing up. Uh, if I want to install them, I can install them externally, but I don't want them as a part of the whole thing. So if I want to change the port number, so you see in my host machine, uh, for example, I have port number 1337 and for SSL I have 4433. The reason behind that is because port number 80 and others are being already been occupied, so I changed the port number for services. In this virtual machine, these ports are not occupied, so that's why they are not shown here uh they are they are easily accessible by zap so if i want to change where i can change this i will go into the config file here i'll first of all stop the apache service i'll go into the config file and then i'll go into the httpd httpd.conf first one i'll go into that file this will open in the notepad by default i'll make a search with control f and i'll search for port number 80. go down See, it is listing on port 80. It's a comment, but I can change it to any port I want. Let's say uh, 082. I'll 
point eighty again, and I'll replace it to eight zero eight two. The next one, server local host eight zero eight two. That's it. So wherever there it was listened to port number eighty, I changed it to eight zero eight two, and then I saved it, and then I close it. I go back again into conf, and I now go into the HTTPD SSL. If in case this configuration does not work for you, then only go into the second one. And here you have to change the SSL port, that is 443. You have to change it over here. So I'll go into Control F, finding source 403. Find, here is 443. I change it to 4433. And maybe 4444 works out as well. 4444. Change it to 4444. Next, next, that's it. And I save this as well. That close it. So now, if you will see, I will just restart my ZAMP one more time. I'll just pin it to my program to taskbar, quit it, and I start it again. See, if I start the Apache now. It will start on the port 8082 and double 4 double 4. That's where it's starting up now. So this is how you can change your ports. So this is how you can change the configuration for your ports. And you can use them. Now the port uh, now the service will work on 8082. Or double 4 double 4. Over there. I'll just open my browser and I will start it. I have my Firefox. Let me just turn off the proxy. I was working with Dark Suit. So if I do localhost 8082, we'll get a ZAM dashboard. Right, so 8082 is my official port now. If I can if I change the configuration back to the default one, okay. So here I can change back to default. So that's how basically you configure a ZAMP. Now the point is how you can actually this is this ZAMP is working exactly like a server. It is just like a local server running on my side, giving me a control complete control panel for all sort of services running on here. I have like different sort of panels for every sort of service, but here I have a single panel where I can monitor everything. So Zam makes that thing easy. Now the point is, if on Apache there are some logs that are being generated, I can check those logs and just click on logs. And then there are two types of logs. There is access log, then there is error log, and then there is PHP log. So if there are some errors with the Apache, it will show me here. If there are some errors, uh, if there are some logs that are being generated, for accessing Apache, I can see them here, and if there is something wrong with the PHP, it will show me up here. So let's go with the access log first, see what kind of things are being used with the help of Apache so far. If I go in there, you see it opens in a notepad again, and it's showing me all sort of things done with the help of Apache so far. I access the dashboard, I access the dashboard itself, you can see it is giving me a complete log for every sort of thing done over so far. You just go to this log over here. This one. It was generated on 19th of September 2019. This was a time 9 p.m. 41 minutes. Uh, it was a get response for the dashboard. It was the browser, and this is where it generated from, and that's it. Pretty much it. And if I access it from another source, it will show me here the IP of that source as well, like where it actually accessed from. So that. That's how you basically monitor the logs, like what kind of things happened to the server basically so far. So whatever kind of access I'll make in the XAMPP, I'm gonna I'm gonna see them here right away. So that's how it actually works. These are the logs being generated for whatever kind of request was made to the Apache server from the client. So this is how you can basically see logs. If there is an error log with the Apache, I can see it here, like whatever error that was generated. These many errors were generated, but these are not critical errors so that's why it doesn't make any difference and yeah that's how it actually works and uh, this is how uh, Apache and XAMPP work 
uh, Zamp, this is how majorly Zamp works. This is like a miniature model of server. Works exactly the same way in Linux. You can install it in Linux as well. And that's how it's going to work basically. Now, the point is that it is working on a specific port, right? So, the, these ports are uh, generating, uh, like initializing some services which actually runs that particular server for you. Now, you can monitor these services from uh, outbound and inbound routes. So, uh, I'm gonna, let me see. 